Hello, everybody. Welcome along. It's Premier League predictions time. And Mikey, is there any surprise to anybody that you beat me again last week? No, I'm on a on a little bit of a roll at the moment. I'm like I'm like Manchester City. You get into February, and then I really start to purr. Oh God. Um, so I mean. We didn't cover ourselves in massive glory, although maybe that's not fair on you. So you got five correct outcomes. Actually, no, that's pretty decent because there was only eight fixtures, wasn't there? I was saved. I got the only correct scoreline. Um, yep. And I'll continue to back Wolves forevermore now. Um, Wolves <laughs> won, Sheffield United nil. But it was five to four to Mikey. And if you are keeping score, I think that might be five wins in a row, which I'm really going to work hard on this. I'm going to try... So hard. From now on, as David Prince said, as he was just about to be fired. Um, so we get right into this, Mikey. We've got a full slate of 10. Um, complete transparency to the audience. We are recording on Tuesday. So none of the Premier League teams that are playing in the FA Cup have played yet. We don't know those results. Um, and 10 out of the 20 are still in the tournament. So we'll kind of Fudge our way around that, and I'll throw over Brentford, who are struggling, versus Chelsea, who I think I'm required to um, refer to by alliterative Gary Neville quotes from from now on after their um, EFL Cup final defeat, Mikey. Yeah, Brentford are right in this relegation battle, aren't they? Especially after Everton's points deduction was reduced down from from 10 to 6. That pulls Everton away from trouble a little bit. Brentford are only five points above Luton and Luton have a game in hand. So these are difficult times for Brentford. They they went to, to Wolves a few weeks ago and won, didn't they? And I think a lot of us thought, oh, they're going to click into gear now and they'll probably be fine. They've had dips in their previous seasons in the top flight. They've got Tony back. He scored at Wolves and I think we expected them to maybe not go on a run, but, but start stop losing as many games, but they've gone on and lost three in a row since then and conceded nine goals. So looking at the bigger picture, Ben, that's 15 defeats in 22. They started the season really well, but since about the end of September, it's been a real struggle for them. Um, they did win at Chelsea back in October, and this is the biggest game for Brentford fans, I think. Maybe some would go for Fulham, but... Um, I think to a lot of Brentford fans, Chelsea's the team that they they really want to beat. There's a lot of Chelsea fans in the in the Brentford area and the Staines area where a lot of Bees fans live. Um, but Chelsea, they're obviously in FA Cup action against Leeds in midweek. We don't know what's going to happen in that game. I thought they were quite good in spells in that League Cup final, but they just completely fell apart in in extra time, didn't they? Um, poor finishing, just cost them again and it's been costing them all season. Speaking of finishing, Kunkunku is injured again, which limits Chelsea's attacking options for this game. Um, they've only won one of their five Premier League meetings against Brentford as well. So there's not that many good things I can I can say for Chelsea, but they have won four in a row in London derbies recently. Maybe there's something in that. Um, but I'm going to start off with a 2-2 a draw here, Ben. I, I I I can't see Brentford going there and winning, but but I think they're good enough to go and get a point. Yeah. Um, I'm struggling straight away with this one, which isn't blindingly obvious. Um, so I am worried about Brentford. And someone made a good point, Mikey, that we get these things where teams reach the end of a cycle and you don't blame them when the cycle essentially, we as Ipswich fans were watching this cycle starting um, yeah. six, seven years ago in the championship. Mm. And it does feel like it's reaching a natural end and how you manage that is really, really tricky, isn't it? And I mean, Brentford have been the masters of, you know, gradually tweaking their team and improving it. But this is as hard as it's been, hasn't it? So I'm going to back Chelsea um, and that hurts my heart a little bit because obviously we've all followed the Brentford story because that means I'm really plunging them further into the um, into the relegation race. I agree with you on both teams to score. So I'm going to go Brentford 1, Chelsea 
two. Not that I particularly want that to happen. And you already mentioned Everton and the points deduction. Uh, quickly tell me before you give me your prediction of Everton versus West Ham. Did you think that that was going to um, be reduced from 10 points? Sounded like it, it was possible. And maybe partly because Everton kind of accepted some some blame didn't they they just weren't happy with the with the sanctions so maybe that was the premier league saying look if you if you make it slightly easier for us we won't absolutely go to town on you with the points dedu- deductions but really it was an impossible one to call and and i didn't as i proved last week i didn't even know when they were announcing it um it, it seems to have just gone on and on and on but i think everson fans will be feeling a lot happier now as will west ham fans than they were just a few days ago but Everton are winless in their last nine matches. They haven't been in good form at all. Obviously, they're up to 15th now. And they've got the fourth best defensive record in the whole league, Ben, Everton this season. But they're, and they're, mid-table for, they're mid-table for XG. So if you just look at those, you're thinking, how are they even down there? But they're only 18th for goals per game. And I think that tells, tells a big sc- story for them. Scoring has been a huge problem. Dominic Calvert-Lewin hasn't scored for Everton since the last time they played against West Ham, and that was way back in October. Um, let's get on to West Ham now. Really does feel like it was no Pakatar, no party for them. They they went weeks yeah, without, he was back, a, a week without him. He comes back in, and it does make sense, doesn't it? Because he is such a, a quality player, and it was at the attacking end where West Ham were really struggling, and he just opens things up. He's such a such a classy player, and he just makes makes life easier for players like Jared Bowen. He can just make the same runs that he was making a few weeks ago, but he's going to be found. Um, And yeah, I think West Ham will be feeling a lot more comfortable um, now. And they are probably eyeing up, getting climbing back up the table again now. Um, Moyes has won on two of his last three visits to Goodison Park. It was March 2002, 2002, Ben, when he started his managerial career in the Premier League. And look at him, he's still going. He's still going strong. He seems to think that he's going to be sticking around after this season as well. I think he intends to sign a new contract, but he's he's just leaving that to one side for now. I'm, Despite West Ham having Pakatar back and it, having him usually means that they win, I think there's going to be a special atmosphere at Goodison Park once again for Everton because they're going to be breathing slightly easier now and they they can just concentrate on what's going on on the pitch and I expect them to win this game by narrow margin. I've put 2-1 down. Yeah, so we're either going to get the Everton reaction, aren't we, um, in terms of... And to be fair... They did when they got the points deduction. Do you remember yeah, doing they this went on a back then? Run, yeah. They had a they yeah. had a pickup then, so there is precedent for that. Or as you say, West Ham are now going to go on a decent run after a losing run. I'm going to play tactically then because you've backed Everton. I'm essentially backing against you rather than against Everton. So I'll back West Ham to go to Everton and with Bowen in form, like you mentioned, and Pakatar returning. I will go for Everton nil, West Ham two. And I'm going to move you on to Fulham, who conquered Manchester United at the weekend. Fulham versus Brighton. Yep, Fulham versus Brighton, Ben, also known as um, Middle Classico. I think I'm in, <laughs> in, in, in a perfectly good position to call it that. Um, Fulham, obviously, a huge win for them last weekend at Old Trafford. Uh, that was their first win away from home since the opening day of the season. So a real monkey off their back. They've been much better at home, obviously. Um, and they've never lost to Brighton in the Premier League, which I uh, found quite interesting. They were missing Jao Palinia for that win at Manchester United. Unfortunately, they're going to be missing him for this one as well. He's done a Sam Morsi and got himself 10 bookings um, along along the way. And he, he's a big miss for them because he just does so much for them recycling possession. They've got a midfielder in there called Lukic, who's been at the club for a couple of years and hasn't played an incredible amount. But apparently he was really impressive last last Saturday against Manchester United. Brighton, um, still impossible to predict, aren't they? Lewis Dunk rescued a late point for them last week, which meant that they stayed up in seventh. Um, they've made, across the season, there's been 96 changes 
made in this Brighton team. Obviously, they've had lots of injury problems. They've pl- been playing in the Europa League as well. Uh, or is it the Europa Conference League? One of the two. But that is at least 25 more changes than any other team. So is it any wonder that they're tough to predict and that they struggle for consistency? Um, but that being said, despite Fulham being better at home, I am going to back Brighton once again. I find them so hard to predict. <laughs> but I'm going to go for a, a 3-1 win because they've just got so many good attacking players. Some excellent caveating from you in there, Mikey. I think you I think you covered all your all your potential um uh comments you're gonna get on on YouTube for that one. Um yeah, I can't call this. So I'm gonna do what you did on the Brentford Chelsea game. Not because you can call it, but I'm gonna go for the um the Desmond and both teams to be scoring, honors to be even, but um, you know. An entertaining spectacle, we think. And I'm going to move you on, Mikey, to Newcastle United versus Wolves is next on my iPad. Yeah, I quite fancied Newcastle at Arsenal, didn't I? I said that they they might get a point, but as it was, they were absolutely swept aside. They've Arsenal conceded far too many goals. Moment, yeah. Arsenal are good, to be fair. Um, but Newcastle just conceding way too many goals. They've conceded 23 in their last eight games. Defence was their their main strength last season. Um, and you'd think that a team that has lots of injuries at the at the attacking end of the pitch might just sort of tighten up a little bit and just really work on the defence. But obviously, it hasn't been helped by the injuries, especially to to Nick Pope in goal. They're fifth in the league for for goals scored, Newcastle, but they've only got the thirteenth best defensive record, and that kind of explains why they are down in mid table now. Potentially, obviously, we don't know what's going to happen in that FA Cup game against Blackburn, but they might be now turning their focus to to the FA Cup because Newcastle are really going to fancy themselves in that competition. They'll they'll get a lot of injured players back by the by the time we reach the semi-final stage. So I think they're mad keen to win a trophy, aren't they? So I I quite fancy them in that competition. Wolves, as you mentioned earlier, Ben, they just got the job done last week against Sheffield United, didn't they? They've had six wins in their last nine games. They're in really, really good form. Three three wins out of their last four away games as well so they could go as high as seventh with a win here and I'm gonna back them to do it because Newcastle let me down last week I'm gonna go for a 2-1 Wolves win and I think you're gonna join me I don't know what score line you're gonna go for <laughs> I was I was going 1-0 Wolves all the way so I was hoping that you weren't gonna weren't gonna gazump my prediction what did you go for 2-1 Mike I went for 2-1 yeah yeah um i just not had much success doing this, and I have had success back in Wolves. So um, they're my new Aston Villa, I think, from a couple <laughs> of months ago. And yeah, just I think a lot of people owe Gary O'Neill an apology. He went on Monday Night Football, didn't he, and gave it the, um, the PowerPoint presentation, and everyone kind of mocked him. And it was like, well, actually, you know, you can you can mock him for talking tactics a lot, but it's working, isn't it? And like you said, if they go up to seventh, that's the halcyon days of when Boson weren't bothered how much they were spending pre-austerity Wolves and Boson. So, yeah, um, that's a guaranteed home win then because we both backed an away win yep. for Wolves <laughs> up. <laughs> yeah, Newcastle. this is good news for Newcastle. <laughs> um, Nottingham Forest versus Liverpool, Mikey. And um, for those youngsters watching... One of the greatest games ever in the late 80s. Um, look it up. It's Doug Leash's Liverpool beating Forest 5-0. And all five goals are goal of the month contenders. It's Beardsley and Rush. And it's ridiculous. So, yeah, go, go and check that one out, Mikey. Um, and um, let's have your prediction. Forest, Liverpool. Yeah. I really like Forest attacking players. I keep saying this every week, don't I? The, the attacking players that they've got, they they shouldn't be down there. But... Like Brentford, they've really dropped, haven't they? Because of Everton um, getting those points back. Forrest are now four from bottom. Um, like, there's not that many good things to say about them at the moment, apart from how good they are attacking wise. But un- under Nuno, they've conceded 17 goals. They're, sorry, they've scored 17 goals in his nine games, but they've also conceded 18, which is a, a slightly worrying trend from them. But historically, despite what you were saying about that fantastic 5-0 Liverpool win, Forrest, interestingly, are unbeaten in their last 13 league games at home to 
to Liverpool. The last 13. time, thirteen, yeah, the the last time um, Liverpool went to the City Ground in the league match and won, they had Hansen and Lawrenson playing centre back, and no Dalglish was playing up front with with Ian Rush. So, yeah, a little bit of a statistical and Mikey, anom- this was anomaly the that one. Richard Key's first ever Sky Sports Premier League game yeah. was. Forest Liverpool, and of course, yeah, Teddy Sher- said, Wow, so Teddy right Sherry that, scored yeah. L- last year. It was uh, Awanyi scored the winner against against Liverpool. That was a really big win um, last season for and for Steve Don Cooper. Hutchinson I think that was went mad in the office next to me in your IMG building. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure he did, um, <laughs> but yeah, Li- Liverpool they obviously are on a high after winning the 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 EFL Cup. The kids are all right, aren't they? That they might have Salah and Nunes back for this one. They're obviously they've got the the FA Cup game against Southampton, which which won't be easy in midweek. So they might be a little bit tired for this game. It's not going to be easy for them. Um, but they've won seven of their last eight, and they're the highest goal scorers in the league. So I'm going to back them to score a few goals here. But I think Forest will score as well because they're so good on the counter attack. I'm going for. Nottingham Forest one, Liverpool three. Nice. I don't think that's breaking worth a that bonus breaking point. that hoodoo. That's not worth a bonus, is it? It's not high enough for Liverpool. No. 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 Um, yeah, I'm going to back Liverpool as well then. And um, what a flex that was! Winning a cup final with your with your reserve team. How about <laughs> how about that? It's almost a bit cocky from Mister Klopp, but um, I think he's earned the right to do what the hell he likes him after his run. As Liverpool manager, so yeah, let's go for the win. Um, you've just told me in the build up that Forest can see two per game under Nuno, so I will go Forest nil, Liverpool two, and we'll just take a quick pause for the pause, Mikey. Above uh, Mikey's left ear, you will see we are sponsored by Match Bingo, and everybody loves the free games on um, Match Bingo. If I pull that across there, right at the bottom, that is the card for Saturday. The 5.30 game, which we are about to speak about. Is it next on the card? Oh, it's one away. I should have planned that better, shouldn't I? (laughs) It's Luton versus Villa, Mikey. So you can head over to the Match Bingo app, and I will do it for you on the screen here. Um, Click on their confirmed purchase. It's absolutely free. Oh, looks like they've swelled the prize pot, have they? Uh, Look, yeah. Oh, and a double bonus pot. So if you look uh, down there, there's two prizes for the full house so you've got a double chance there if you get the full house um as ever please play responsibly if you are playing match bingo even though this game is free which everybody loves and let them know that mikey and i sent you by clicking on that their qr code on the screen what a perfect link it would have been if i wasn't saying tottenham <laughs> versus crystal palace mikey <laughs> yeah <laughs> professionalism is and and that is what yeah. i want yeah the so we're, we're going to the, <laughs> yeah spurs crystal palace i'm i'm going to this this one first um first time seeing oliver glasner in the crystal palace dugout It'll be interested to see have you uh, that stadium see how palace play. uh i have been to the stadium a few oh, times yeah beautiful um, yeah beautiful stadium can be really atmospheric um can be deadly silent as well on a on a bad day but uh, I haven't actually been there since Ange Postecoglou took over, so so maybe I've judged it unfairly. Um, Spurs are now five points off fourth. Probably relieved that, well, certainly relieved that Manchester United lost last week against Fulham. They really miss Poro and Udugi at, at fullback. They're such important players to to the way Ange Postecoglou wants to play, and they're not going to be back fit for this one either. But they've got serious firepower up front, Spurs, and they don't have injuries in that position anymore. Son has eight goals and two assists in his 15 appearances against Crystal Palace. So you can almost certainly expect to see him wheeling away with a celebration or two in this game. Palace, really good start under Glasner. I think the main difference, which I've heard from Palace fans, is they were getting players into the box last week against Burnley, getting midfielders into the box. Even Jordan Ayew got into the box, Ben, and and scored a goal. Um, He's been a breath of fresh air since he came in for Palace fans. He's saying all the right things. They like his mannerisms on the touchline. It's a world away from from Roy Hodgson, bless him. And 
obviously he got the winning start as well. So Palace going to be pretty high on confidence here, but they are still missing Michael Lise. I can say this for the next few weeks. I think Mark Gay is still not ready to return, but Eberiche Eze could be back. I doubt he'll start in this game, but it's nice to have that that option off the bench, isn't it? I think that this one is going to be a really entertaining game. And obviously I hope it is as well because I'm going to be there. So for that reason, I'm going to play my bonus point here, Ben. I'm going for a five-goal thriller <laughs> edged by Tottenham, a 3-2 win for Spurs. I just thought you were going to say I'm going to go for a 5 nil win for Spurs. We're really going for it. 3-2, um, um, says Mikey. We'll stick the asterisk on there. If you're playing along, by the way, Stick an asterisk by one of your score lines, the most outlandish, and we'll give you a, give you a bonus point. We'll give you four for that one. Um, well, I'm going to back Spurs, and um, I don't imagine Palace are going to all of a sudden become really entertaining, unless there's some kind of reaction from the the players against Roy and his brilliant team shape. And when you feel bad criticizing Roy um, with his um, standing in the game, but. I'm going to go for a straightforward one then. Um, I've already played a 2 0, haven't I? But that was, I played two 2 0s away from home. Let's not do another one. Let's do a 3 1 then, Mikey. I'm closer to your scoreline than I wanted to be then. Um, Spurs 3, Palace 1. And if we're depending on it and it is 3 1, and then Palace get a second goal, I'm going to be so gutted because that's going to hit you with the bonus point, isn't it? Um, right. Apparently, you can play this game for free on Match Bingo this weekend. It's Luton versus Aston Villa, and Luton play Manchester City in the um, in the cup in midweek, don't they? Yeah, tough week for Luton. Um, they've got a real job on their hands now, haven't they? Um, in this relegation battle, I think Rob Edwards. I, I think I heard him say earlier on in the season, or maybe it was Andros Townsend talking about Rob Edwards. He said that he has a, a league table that had Everton on an extra 10 points each week just to try and show them the the worst possible situation that they could be in and work work from that one, which I think was quite clever psychology. And definitely Rob Edwards has done a fantastic job of Luton, but they have lost five of their last seven home games, which is a bit of an issue. They need to start winning at home again at the Kenny if they're going to have any chance of getting themselves out of trouble. They're obviously missing... Adebayo, but who wouldn't? He's been fantastic this season for Luton up top. One thing that Luton could cling to for, for what this matters, they, they've got a good historical record against Villa at home. Um, they've won nine of their 11 they encounters last against them. They played them in a, a League Cup game um, just less than a decade ago and they beat them 3-1. <laughs> um, but yeah, obviously nobody that was there then is... Well, actually, no. Pelly Ruddick might have been playing. Who knows? Yeah. <laughs> Feels like he's been there since um, time began. Um, Villa have won their last two away games and it, an impressive home win against Nottingham Forest as well. So looks like Villa's little little blip is out of the way now. They've got the fourth best attack in the league and the fifth best defence. They're solid, aren't they? And with with those numbers, it looks like they're exactly where they should be. Luton do give up chances and Villa are good at taking them. They're, they're decent on the counter-attack as well. I, I'm afraid I always want to go for a Luton win at home, but this time I'm going for a 2-1 Aston Villa away win. Oh, I suppose I'd better be loyal, more honest um, to um, Luton. What did you go? 2-1, Mikey, Villa? I went 2-1, Villa. Do you reckon they can get a draw, Luton? The only way they're going to draw is one F in one, isn't it? There's, I don't, I don't see, yeah, I don't see um, double um, double goals for both teams. Um, oh, I do fancy Villa, but I've got my emotional allegiance here to my geographical and my dearly departed allegiance here. So against my better judgment, I'm going to play a one-one. No one's played a one-one yet, Mikey. There you go. We're living dangerously um, this round. Uh, and I'm going to move you on to Burnley versus Bournemouth. Burnley, God. Yeah, Burnley versus Bournemouth. This is the battle of the two teams that are at the very bottom of the form table at the moment. Burnley just wretched at home this season. 13 games, 10 defeats. It's just not good enough, is it, at Turf Moor? They've dropped 11 points from winning positions this season as well, which which surprised me. I'd, I'm, I'd 
can't say I've noticed them leading many matches, but apparently they have. And that's, I think, Vincent Company. if he had hair, he'd be tearing it out at the moment, just trying to find answers because he's tried quite a few different things and nothing nothing seems to be working for them. Um, one good thing they've got, they've only lost one of their last 14 home league games against Bournemouth. But again, we're talking about different managers and different players here, aren't we? Bournemouth, uh, winless in their last nine, absolutely dreadful form. Um, but they were in really bad form the last time they faced Burnley. I think that was Iriola's first win back in October. Uh, they're 14th, but they're not safe yet, Bournemouth. Um, they're 16th for goals scored and 17th for goals conceded, which suggests that they might be a little bit lucky to be where they are um, up in 14th. I fancy them to to start pulling away from trouble now, though. This is a game that they'll be circling as one that they go need to go and win. I've got a 2-1 to the Cherries written down. Yeah, I'm just consistently backing against Burnley now. Um, doesn't please me in any way to be doing that, but just been so poor, haven't they? So I will take their goal out. No, I won't go 2-0. I've done too many of them. I'll go for a 1-0 win to Bournemouth. And you've just sent me down a rabbit hole, Mikey, because you have picked an amazing that League Cup game. Would you like to know some of the players who played in Luton versus Aston Villa in 2016-17? Uh, you'll to. never guess who Luton's goalkeeper was. One Christian Walton. Oh. Witness in that game. And he must have been on loan from Brighton. You're right that Peli Ruddock and Panzu did play in that game. I can also see the lesser spotted Jack Marriott and James Justin, who's currently top of the league and in and around the England squad with um, Leicester. Uh, Aston Villa, their goal was scored by one Jordan Ayew, who you mentioned okay. earlier um, in the show. Uh, Micah Richards, uh, presumably playing at right back. Jack Grealish is in that side um, as well. Ross McCormack up top. So, um, yeah, you could... We could do a whole show just um, telling stories about those. Um, Would that have been points? Paul Lambert as well, Ben? Are they, are, they, are they in the championship at that point? Um, I'm not sure. I yeah, think it might be. The there. Yeah, I think it might be Steve Bruce, but Villa fans will. I think Di Matteo. Oh, no, it could be Di Matteo, couldn't it? That early in the season if they're getting knocked out. Interesting. Um, and the very next season, um, I was at Luton's only League Cup game because it was against Ipswich. And um, Dave McGoldrick... Turned us over, didn't Luton. they? No, no, that was later on. Um, this was 17, ah, 18. First okay. and Salinas, yeah. Anyway, Goldrick I've gone down a well, yeah. <laughs> complete rabbit hole ahead of the biggest game of the weekend. Um, yeah, use whatever language um, you like to describe it, but that's how I feel. Manchester City versus Manchester United. and. I've got a bonus point to play here, but away you go, Mikey. Oh, interesting. You're going for a Manchester United win, are you? <laughs> that would be a, well, it's either that a, a or a choice. massive scoreline. <laughs> yeah, I think that's probably more likely, isn't it? Um, City just don't lose many games at, at this time of year, do they? And recently, in in some of their games, they've been nowhere near the best, but they've ground out ground out victories. Um, the Chelsea draw a couple of weeks ago, just being. The only outlier there, they've just sort of been grinding out victory after victory. United really need to bounce back from that defeat against Fulham and what better way than to to go to the Etihad and win a game. Um, their, their hopes of getting in the top four are already pretty faint. They need to to start, start winning and winning consistently, which we thought that they were doing. I think we were expecting them to come into this Fulham, into this Manchester derby on the, on the back of another straightforward win against Fulham but it wasn't to be City have won four of the last five derbies and have scored in their last 54 home games in all competitions so I wouldn't be backing Manchester United to win by nil to nil even um, but no fixture in the whole of the Premier League has seen more away wins than this one yeah, how many How many of those um, were Ferguson though? <laughs> yeah there might be one or two in there um, <laughs> City have started keeping clean sheets, um, but we've seen shocks in this fixture before. 
Haaland has, I'm just going backwards and forwards here a little bit. Erling Haaland has scored five in his three ga- three games against Manchester United. I'm going to be really, really bold here, Ben. I'm not really. I'm going to go for a 3-1 Manchester City win. Well, the most humorous thing I can do, basically, Mikey, I've got two choices now. I've either got to call Arsenal beating Sheffield United 5-0 to get a bonus point, or I've got to go for Man City to not score against Man United, which is just so <laughs> implausible. It's not even funny. Oh, that's a double bonus point, that. It's a double. Oh, of course I'm going to go for it if it's a double bonus point. So do I go for a nil F in nil draw, or do we go for Manchester United ridiculously going to um, the... It's just not going to happen, Mikey. I've got to flip it round. I've got to. It's got to be. I'm going to put my money behind Arsenal and just to go for a very straightforward Manchester City three, Manchester United nil. And yeah, we'll have to load up on poor old Sheffield United. I'm afraid. Sheffield United versus Arsenal is our last fixture in round 27. Yeah, uh, Arsenal will hope that their rivals slip up before they play on Monday, won't they? Um, they did have a bad record against Sheffield United a few years ago, but they've won their last three with an aggregate of 10, 10 goals to one, which is slightly worrying for Sheffield United. In their last two away games as well, they've they won 6-0 and 5-0, and they could become the very first team in English football history to win three in a row by a margin of more than five goals. So wow. we're... On the brink of history here, if they can get that five 0 win, which I think you're you're going to predict here, um, Sheffield United will hope to have one of or both uh, Brereton Diaz or Cameron Archer back, which will give them more of a threat in attack. They need to be clinical when the chances do come along because they might only get one or two. Arsenal are defending really well this season. You think normally Monday night. Bramall Lane, Sheffield United against Arsenal. You'd kind of expect it to be a real, real raucous atmosphere. I think Sheffield United could kind of be forgiven if it isn't because of the the fear that's been brought on by by recent defeats. So I don't know how much of a difference the home crowd are, are going to be able to make in this one. I, I think it's going to be routine for Arsenal, but I think they're going to miss out on that that crazy piece of history. I've gone for a three 0 Arsenal win. You've not also mentioned the elephant in the room here. Sheffield United nil, Aston Villa five. Sheffield United nil, Brighton five. They have lost. They like, you didn't mention that, did you? They've lost their last no. two home games, five no. nil. So that must be some other kind of record. Um, so look, Blades fans, don't clip this out. You know I love you, but I need a bonus point. He's not going to give me one for four goals. So I'm going to have to go. Um, what, sorry, what did you go for, Mike? I haven't written it down. I went 3 0. 3 0. Well, I've got to go 5 0, haven't I? Um, so for my bonus point, Sheffield United nil, Arsenal five. And yeah, apologies in advance. And I hope you win, Blades, but I don't think you're going to, sadly. Um, and sadly, this is the end of this um, show for today. Um, get involved down there in the comments. Remember the normal rules with predictions don't be a snowflake, it's just a bit of fun. We hope every single team wins ever, every game in the history of ever, and that you're really, really happy. But it's not going to happen. Our predictions reflect reality um, when maybe some of the comments don't. Um, And the other thing is get your comments in prior to the games. We love to to see them. Um, Let us know if you beat me. That's not going to be hard. But especially if you beat Mikey, because he's way better at this than I am. Um, Mikey, enjoy. uh, Where did you say you go? Spurs and Palace. Spurs Um, and Palace. yeah, have the last word. Uh, yeah, I've just realised I've come onto a, a, what's primarily a championship football channel and I've predicted that all three promoted teams are going to lose pretty heavily this weekend. So so sorry about that. Um, but yeah, if, I'd love to see any of those three teams cause an upset this weekend. Now, you might see a YouTuber with millions of subscribers and views a week driving a Bentley. It's a bit more modest, I have to say, when you're covering the championship. So if you can find a few quid each month to support over on Patreon or by hitting the join button here. You are making the world of difference for myself, Shaley and Enid.